I'm going to show you how to fix this LG TV with model OLED 55 CX AUA, which is experiencing a very common fault. When I power it up, I do get my red standby light, but I get no picture on screen. Another common issue we see is the TV will turn on. We do get proper picture and audio, but eventually the TV will shut itself off as if it's overheating. So what is causing this problem? To find out, we need to remove the back cover and perform a quick troubleshooting test. For the back cover removal, we have five screws we want to undo. Now we can go ahead and lift up the power cable away from the back cover. And we have our clip over here. We're gonna squeeze the sides and gently wiggle it out, just like that. And now we can go ahead and lift the back cover, just like that. And we have now exposed our circuit boards. Heat is one of the big killers for electronics. Sometimes freezing some of the defective parts can help revive them momentarily. So we're gonna be using this can of compressed air upside down to freeze some of the parts on the TV. If you don't have one of these, I will have an Amazon link in the video description below where you can purchase one. The first part I wanna freeze is the processor underneath the heatsink on the main board. All right, now let's go ahead and power up the TV. And let's see what we get. Hey, look at that. Oh, we're getting picture, but it's intermittent and it's coming in and out. Now it froze, but we were able to make it better momentarily. Because freezing the processor on the main board temporarily restored the TV's functionality, that does confirm the main board is the issue. Okay, easy enough, let's replace it and call it a day. Well, not so fast. Unfortunately, these main boards are completely out of stock and no longer available for sale anywhere, even as used models. This is where we step in and offer an alternative. We offer a mail-in repair service where we will fix your main board on a component level and give you a one-year warranty with the repair. We will have information about that in the description down below, as well as in the comment section. Now, if you're wondering exactly how we're gonna fix this main board on a component level, keep watching, we're about to show you. Let's remove the main board so we can take a closer look at it. To do that, we're gonna first start by removing the ribbons and cables. This one, we're gonna squeeze the sides and wiggle it out. For the ribbons, we have a latch mechanism. We need to flip the latches up, then we can remove the ribbons. For our audio connector, we need to squeeze the sides again and wiggle it out another latch mechanism, and now we can go ahead and remove the screw. The main board should now lift right off. Before we proceed with the repair of the main board, if you have found the video helpful or useful so far, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content. As we just saw a few moments ago, freezing the processor allowed the TV to momentarily work again. What this confirms for me is the processor is either defective or the solder balls that connect the processor to the PCB are cracked and either need to be reflowed or the chip needs to be reballed. Now that we've removed the heatsink, we can more clearly see the processor here. And as you can tell, it's actually a little bit brown. It's quite heat stressed. And on the back, side, you can also see right here, it is very brown, indicating a lot of heat stress. So I don't think it would be safe for us to try a reflow or a reball. At this point, I think we need to just go ahead and replace that chip. Because this is a BGA type chip, we're going to go ahead and use our rework machine. I call it a BGA type chip because it doesn't have any legs. Instead, it connects to the board via a ball grid array. What this rework machine does is it will very precisely heat up the processor from the top and the circuit board from the bottom until the solder connecting the processor to the board reaches its melting point. It does so without affecting the nearby surrounding components such as these sensitive RAM chips. Now that we've removed the processor, we need to remove all of the old solder to make way for our new replacement chip. The replacement comes with solder balls already installed on the bottom of the chip. Now we want to clean up the entire area with isopropyl alcohol to remove all of the residual flux left behind. A quick check to make sure there is no damage to the PCB or the traces. And finally, we line up our replacement chip until the solder balls on the chip lock into place with the solder pads on the board. Now we can turn the machine back on to heat up the chip and the circuit board to the solder's melting point. 
We've just finished the installation of our new processor chip, so now we're ready to put our new thermal paste, and we're gonna be using some MX-4 for this processor. And I'm just gonna put a little bit everywhere and dab it. And I just put the heatsink on real quick to make sure that we had a nice even spread. And there's just a tiny little bit down here that's missing, as well as in this corner. And now we should be good. Oh, nope, top left. Okay, now we should be good. We have a new processor. We have some fresh high-end thermal paste, but what's really to prevent this from happening again? Especially if the previous chip got so hot that it started browning the board. Well, one thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a thermally conductive silicone pad which has ceramic particles in it that will help dissipate heat away from the PCB and into the chassis of the TV. So we're gonna place it right here on that brown spot and it's going to transfer that heat from the processor into the chassis. So our entire TV has now become a heat sink. This will help prevent the failure from happening again. So let's go ahead and install it and see what we get. Okay, our main board is installed back into the TV. Let's power it up. And let's take a look. And our light is flashing and it looks like the TV turned right on. Okay, and it looks like we have another successful repair. If you're interested in sending in your main board for us to fix, we will have a link in the video description below to our website. Again, we do offer a one-year warranty to all of our repairs. As well, we will have a couple of these available for sale. We have a few refurbished right now, and again, we'll have links for that in the video description below. If you found the video helpful or useful, hit that like button, subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.